Well, it's getting late here, but I got quite a bit of uh, got some work lights out, and we're gonna keep going. The headlight on, and so right now, uh, starting to cut the joinery in this. I've got the uh, just got a couple curves made, whatever I could cut on the reference face. I have the uh, pocket cut, or the pocket. I've got the mortise cut out for the tie beam on the reference face side. Now I've got to uh, I've got to carry it through on the rest, and and we're gonna keep going. Another nice night up here, you know. The summer's coming on. Ended up getting held up pretty good today. Somehow the uh, lawnmower got a big ball of 550 cord caught up in it, so that was a couple hours of ripping the deck apart. And you know, I shouldn't complain because my wife mows the yard. I've never had to. I really shouldn't be complaining. <clears throat> but boy, I get to fix it every time it breaks. Yeah, uh, always a good time. What are you gonna do? Somewhere somebody's sad, right? She is the boss. I do what I'm told. Fortunately, she hadn't divorced me yet over this project, but uh, you never know. <coughs> the timber framing in the dark, guys. You know, I could think of a few other things that are probably more fun to do in the dark than timber framing, but, uh, well. The boss wants the project done. Can't have nothing. Tell you what, as soon as I have the funds, I'm going to get myself a uh, 7401. I'd love the, the chain mortiser itself. I really like it. It's, it's a great machine. I mean, certainly nothing wrong with the way it cuts or anything like that, but that uh, this whole clamping mechanism on this older style, I mean, I kind of bastardized it to get it to work on these bigger timbers. I mean, the, the only clamp up to like a six to a you know, probably about a six or eight inch beam before so I rigged it up so it could work on a uh, these ten inchers all right and it's the only complaint I have
we have that cut. All right. So we have this mortise cut, and I want to double check because I'm going to square the side of this mortise off. I'm going to use my combination square. And a good thing to do, good habit to be into, check make sure that square is square because sometimes they will have a little play in them. And that's pretty good. I'm square to this. So I like to check that once in a while, especially pretty much every time I adjust that, I'll just double check make sure it's square. So that's a little off. Try this side. I think I might have to go a little deeper on this guy. I'll double check it again. And the money. Okay. It's square. And check the ends. Uh, chisel that out to find out. A little bit off right there, barely. Nothing that can't be cleaned up with a chisel. So this side is a little off. No, well, probably in that length, that's probably about an eighth of an inch off. But it's off in the right way so I can clean it out with a chisel. The other thing you want to do cutting these mortises. Now I'm doing two inch mortises. I want to make sure I can get my two inch chisel down through there. You can also use the body of your framing square. So I have a little, I got a spot right there and I've got a clean up, pair off. And I'm not taking a lot off of that because this side is good and square. And if it's not broke, I don't want to try fixing it, but it's a little bit off of the line right there towards me. So again, you're using a two inch chisel. Just make sure you can get it down through there. That's pretty good. I can stand the clean a little bit off of here. Check it again. Not bad. So, but down on this end, the end of that's round. I have to clean this up right here. Give me a minute and I'll move the camera and you guys can see what kind of job this chain mortiser does. They're not bad. Okay, let me show you what we got here. So that's the kind of job that mortiser does. It's not bad. It's not perfect, but it's really pretty damn good. Now you see I had to clean out the bottom corner right there because otherwise, let's see if I can... Well, if you look down in there, it's rounded. You go back there, well, of course I just moved all the shavings into it. If you go down here, it's square. So, I'm probably going to have to go a little bit deeper with this one, but not too bad.
Now I had a question on I had a question on the uh, on one of the previous videos here about the the knee braces and how tight they're actually going to fit. So if we take this So what's going to happen is a knee brace is in compression. All right, actually, let me go show you one. Okay, a knee brace is in compression. So what that means is the load on it is pushing it into the post. All right, it's pushing it in there good. So. Once you get that together, if you measured everything right, that's going to be very tight in there. That's not going anywhere. And you're not going to have gaps and stuff like that. And you go to this side, see the same thing. It's actually pretty tight. I got some wax on the edge of that, but they fit in there good and tight. A knee brace should be in compression. There are braces designed for a tension load, but they're going to have a much longer tenon than your uh, your standard knee brace, like what I'm doing. Um, so once that sits in there, and when I go to put this together, I will show you guys exactly how it goes together. How you can uh, basically, when you're putting this together, you're pretty much putting together a big puzzle. You, um, that's all it is. You know, you're not, uh, you do have to find creative ways to make it work, especially when you're putting it together by yourself, but there's ways of doing it. Now I'm going to cut this down here. But I'm not going to go exactly to my line. I think what I probably should do, we better get a half inch mark here inside of that. I'm going to match it up with this right here. Maybe I'll go a little bit shy just to be safe. Just get a, just a mark in here. I left it a little shy because that pencil's gonna the angle you're doing. Sometimes I just like to do everything the hard way, you know? So you guys notice normally in the past I use a uh, I use a router to cut these housings, but some of you may not be doing that. So I'm going to show you, I'm just showing you how uh, how it's normally done. And I kerf out simply because it's going to allow me to be it's easier to remove the material that way it's also going to make it a little more accurate and I'm taking my time and I'm going slow I don't want to overcut I'd rather under and I don't go completely to the line I want a little bit of room there so I can clean the housing off. I clean the housing out and then pare it down to the line. So I'll kerf almost to the line just for the rough removal. And then we'll do a uh, then we'll do a nicer and do a final uh, clean up on it. And somebody asked me, a couple people asked me if I like the pole saws. I love the pole saws. They're a great tool. Cut a very fine curve. They're a lot smoother to use. I don't 
I don't like them so much for bigger cuts. I seem to have better luck running my, uh, my standard European style saw. But for stuff like this, these things shine. Any type of fine cutting. And this is just a cheap one. I mean, this is, this is like a $18 pole saw. So it's not like it's not fancy or anything. Now I could do this with a circular saw. And being that this uh, timber is nice and square, I could get away with it. But you are planning for timbers that are out of square. And I know I've mentioned that quite a bit, but it, it does bear repeating. As long as I'm drawing my lines and everything off of my reference base, As long as I'm doing that every time, I know I'm going to be accurate, whether that whether this beam's out of square or not. So again, I like to start. I like to start more towards the middle and work my way out to the edges. And again, I'm using the. Uh, I'm using the bevel on my chisel facing down so I, I'm not digging in too deep into the material. And we're just going to take that down to the kerf. And like right there, I'm getting a little too deep. I'm going to step it back a little bit. And we're going to clean this up. Again, just down to the line. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one curved out section at a time, and very gently work it down to the line. Once I get a couple of them down to the line, I want to check for square. Just about there. That's right on. So, like I said, a knee brace is a Remember the structure that is in a, the load is in compression. So we're actually pushing against the end of that brace. So all your load, all your weight, is going to be resting on the bottom, on the bottom of this mortise, and right here in this housing. That's what's going to take all the load of that brace, is right down in that corner, right in that the corner of that mortise. And like I also said, once we uh, 
Once we go to put this bent together, this section of this bent, and this is the mate to the one that we stood in a previous video, when I go to put this together, that'll become very clear how that works. And I tell you what, I, if you do your measuring right, when you get this put together, you will not be able to move this post one way or the other. And uh, that's why you want to make sure, I mean, you could knock it a little bit if you had to, but it doesn't go easy. So you want to make sure when you do it, you really want to make sure that your measurements are right on the money because it is not easy to change it once you have it together. And they are strong. They're very strong. So anyhow, we're going to keep going. I'm probably going to call it tonight. We'll turn the camera on again for this here. Uh, no, probably not going to be till tomorrow night because my my wife works tomorrow so anyhow you guys have a good night I will see you on I'll see you on part three of this